All right, welcome in, guys. How is everybody doing? This is Marshall's Cafe. I'm Marshall, and today we are doing a coffee review of Go Get 'Em Tiger. Uh, unfortunately, I forgot to grab the bag with me, but we do already have our coffee brewing in our French press over here. So, if you are excited like I am, this coffee is awesome. So, before we go ahead and pour the coffee, we are waiting on it to go off. We're waiting on our timer right now. So, I'm going to go ahead and kind of give y'all an update on stuff that's going on. Uh, there's stuff going on in the background behind me. Just ignore that. But, uh, anyhow. So, the coffee is GGET, which is Go Get Them Tiger. They are based in LA, and they have multiple different locations, like at the GMB Coffee Grand Central, Larchmont, uh, Las Feliz, Highland Park, Row, uh, Go Get Them Tiger at the Music Center, Culver City, West Hollywood, Santa Monica, they're all over LA and they proudly boast it. Uh, they also have a coffee club which starts about $19 a week and I mean hell it delivers exclusive and unique coffees pretty much to your door so you can't really go wrong with that. Um, another great thing about them is that if you go to their website they have tons of different gear, so all kinds of like grinders and different things for your coffee stuff is all laid out right there on their website, which I will, yeah, per week you can set it up so you can do it 19 per week. Uh, it's like one bag per week, you know, depending on how much coffee you actually do drink. Like some people could go through a whole bag in a day. They could be supplying their office with it. Or they could just do it by month, however you want. Like, there's so many different options on their website to set you up. And like I was saying, their gear, they got tons of stuff on the website. And then once you get it all set up on that, you get all your coffee stuff, you easily have the ability to go drink your coffee. And then once you drink this coffee and you taste it the same way we're about to and love it the same way that we do, you can go and buy some merch, shirts, hats, whatever have you and absolutely enjoy the hell out of it so one of the things that the coffee club does is unique coffees the coffee that we're tasting today is an ethiopian one and it is it's not on the website so it's kind of i guess i would say unique because i don't know why it's not on the website they didn't really explain it to me but you know whatever it's good coffee and that's honestly all that matters we got another minute or so left on our like timer so and start up a little bit all right so with ethiopian coffee just so you know it is a dry process uh like kind of a fruit forward bean uh one of the big things about them is that with ethiopia it's a higher elevation so it's like really strictly labeled um, so they do have the SHG, which is a strictly high grown bean, which is, you know, it's one of the labels. And it's also a strictly hard bean because once again, high elevation. Uh, so the beans actually, or not bean, but the coffee itself actually grows a little bit slower. Uh, it gets more nutrients in it. And basically it's just an overall healthier plant. So uh, it gives it, because it's healthier, as all healthy things are it's denser more nutritious uh it's got more flavor because it has time to actually ripen and get get thick you know uh so uh the beans there because ethiopia is a high export coffee i think the beans there are like a high source of their income so with them what they do is they do dry process which a lot of other places do wet processed but because of how Ethiopia does their well, our coffee's ready. Um, because of how they do their coffee, everything's dry processed, and so it has. They put a lot more of the like cherry with the bean while they are drying it out and setting it up, and so it gets more of a whiny and bright taste to it. Which once you get the coffee, you'll you'll kind of understand. And all Ethiopian coffees are like this, so you can almost taste like a berry flavor to it, which. It's, it's not like, a, oh, wow, we're drinking juice. But it's kind of like, here's some coffee with a little bit of berry flavor to it. And the wet processing is a newer method. And when they do the wet process, the fruits actually 
removed from it, so it doesn't get as much of a like berry flavor to it. All right, so whenever you're tasting coffee and you're reviewing the coffee, like how you need to, one of the main things you got to look for. There's like five different things. Like there's there's sweetness, there's body, acidity, flavor, and then you got like the finish. So obviously, as you can tell, our coffee's at a good or ripe temperature. So one thing that we need to do from there is, to me, I always base everything off of my second sip and never my first. Because the first one is pretty much just like heat to me. Never really get the real flavor. So. See, all I'm tasting is like straight up heat. <laughs> All right, so with that, like the very first thing you taste, you taste the coffee, but then you also taste a little bit of the acidity, but you can taste the sweetness to it. Like you can taste the, the fruity flavors, the floralness to it. And it almost tastes like a little bit of the berry stuff. Uh, whenever you have more earthy coffees, you can taste like the, the caramel, like a dark caramelized like sugar in it and the molasses, like more, it tastes more earthy, honestly. Uh, when you have darker roasted coffees, that's one of the things that you can taste as well, like the brown sugar, like a mapley flavor. And, you know, a lot of people who do the coffee with different like flavors in it, like a brown sugar one, they use a darker roast. So, um, let's see here. This coffee is so good that you can drink it straight black. Like, it is awesome. And one of the next thing like I look for whenever I'm reviewing the coffee is the body of the coffee. And when I talk about body of the coffee, what I actually mean is the feel of it, like how heavy is the actual coffee, which I know it comes a lot down to my own personal water and how I've brewed the coffee. But once it's made, how does it feel in your mouth? Does it feel like skim milk or it's like really light or does it feel like heavy whipping cream like it's a thick coffee so with this it it almost tastes not taste but feels like a it feels thin like it's not a heavy coffee like it's something it's good for like you're studying you're doing your own stuff you're out on the go like you don't want something heavy and thick like a hot chocolate would feel in your mouth as you're walking down the street or you're getting ready for the morning or studying for an exam and what have you so that's one good thing about this coffee is it's lighter. It doesn't feel like it's going to bog you down later. Another thing with coffee, the next thing, obviously, is the acidity, which a lot of people are like, oh, my God, I don't want something super acidic, super crazy. Well, uh, you gotta, when you think about pH, which is the acidity, um, coffee no matter how you make it, it's going to stay on the same general pH. No matter what the coffee is, it doesn't really vary much, but it does vary in how they do it. So like a more mild acidic coffee is going to have a more melony kind of tang to it or like a tartness, like a lemon. Um, where when it's like more muted and you can barely tell it, it's going to have that more earthy, dark roast kind of taste like I was talking about earlier, where it's almost like a chocolatey, like, Caramel kind of like it's not really there a whole bunch with this coffee though It does have some acidity to it because it is Ethiopian coffee So it, you can taste the melony like not like a melon flavor, but you can taste that tang It's not like oh my gosh, this is really tart like lemon, but it's acidity is there But it's in a good way like such a subtle way that like okay, I can dig this I can do I could do this uh, And like I was saying like the darker the roast more you taste the effect of the roast really so you can taste the caramelization of the sugars because the bean itself is going to roast longer and with ethiopian coffees doing the dry process they actually keep the fruit like i was saying earlier with the bean while they're drying it so the acidity does go up the acidity has a more floral flavor so when this co when you taste an ethiopian coffee you're going to taste the actual Almost the fruit, really, that's with the coffee. And 
going back to what I was saying earlier with like Ethiopian coffees, and this gets into our next thing, the flavor of the coffee, you get that berry flavor. You get that whiny, bright mouthful of flavor. You get the complex flavor notes, and that's a natural thing with Ethiopian coffee. So this coffee is ha is good. It's got that dry, like cherry fruit that's still attached to the bean flavor. It's got the whiny taste to it. It's got all the good stuff that you actually want from a good morning coffee, rather than that like let's we'll sit down and relax. So this is a good breakfast coffee. Like you got your pastry going on with you. You got some creamer. You got you know, your morning going. And so, what that inevitably comes back down to is the final thing, which is the finish. How does this feel in your mouth when you're drinking this coffee? Uh, like, does it leave like a lingering taste? Like, do you feel it on your teeth? Is it fleeting? Like, you barely even tasted it at all? Like, how long is it in your mouth? Does it feel rough? Or does it feel smooth? Like, do you have a good, like, hmm, let's see. Like, do you have a good impression of it? Like, when you drink it, are you like, wow, I can't wait till I have another sip of that and end up chugging the whole thing? With me, the, the duration of, and the texture of the coffee, it's smooth. That's one of the things that like, you wanna look for. And a lot of people, it's set up with a body body and the finish kind of go almost hand in hand because the body is how it feels in your mouth and the finish is how it is after it's out of your mouth how does your mouth feel at the end of the coffee so with this like it does have a smooth but it's not a lingering coffee because it's a high acidity coffee and the baby's talking in the background y'all he's excited about coffee too he loves hearing me talk about it so with this it's a higher acidity coffee a fruitier coffee it doesn't sit in your mouth it doesn't leave that like chocolatey flavor like a dark roast would because it's a it's more of a medium to light roast like when you see this bean like you'll see what i'm talking about it is a it's not black it's got a light roast to it and you can definitely tell in how well that ggt did the roast of this bean like they made a phenomenal coffee and honestly it's one that i'm going to have to keep in my circulation because it's that good it's such a, I can have a nice summery spring day. You know, they got all these locations in Hollywood, so I see why they didn't do a heavy roast on this because of the awesome weather that's in LA. So it doesn't linger. It kind of goes a little bit quickly. I am kind of sad to see it go though, but I didn't make a whole big thing out of it. So everything seems like it's pretty good. If y'all have, any interest in this coffee which you absolutely should i'm going to drop the link it's in the bio check them out we do have it on discord so all you have to do is hop in that with our channel and come check out more coffee reviews if you did enjoy this make sure you do come back hang out and have some more coffee so guys i'm marshall this is marshall's cafe hopefully you enjoy your cup i'll see y'all soon